Hey guys, welcome to Washington Park Library. Me and Nick's here with our STEM or STEAM art video today. Welcome. It has been beautiful out and I am super excited about this one. What are we doing today, Nick's? Okay, so today we're doing a vanishing drawing. Cool. Like so a vanishing point drawing. That sounds interesting. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what a vanishing point is? So a vanishing point is... Well, I got an idea. Let me show an example, and then why don't you point out where the vanishing point is on the picture. Because okay. I always love books at the library because it's a library. So we're going to talk about this Corot painting up here. All right? So you see that? Yep. So where would you say the vanishing point is on this I would picture? Where would you say? The vanishing point is... You can use the ruler. Point it out. I would say the vanishing point is like right here. Yeah, exactly. And so when you look at this painting, where do your eyes go? For me, it's right down the middle. Yeah, so that's what a vanishing point is. That's where your eyes are drawn to. So you're here standing at the beginning of this road, but you're looking down the road all the way to the other end. And that's how Corot did this wonderful painting. But if you look at many landscape paintings and art, a lot of them will have a vanishing point. And usually it's, where is it? If, uh, if the, <clears throat> so it's usually just above the horizon line. So if this is our horizontal paper here, and the sun would be here, let's say from the sunrise, the horizon line is just where the sun is here. And the vanishing point is usually just a hair above it, so you're drawn into it. All right, this sounds like a lot of fun. And is this going to be difficult? That sounded like a lot of words. No, it's kind of easy. Okay, I like kind of easy. How about you guys? All right, let's start in. Okay, Nick, what's the first step? Okay, so the first step is to kind of, well, if you have a ruler, you can either just mm -hmm. draw a, a line vertically down. Okay, so am I going to hold my paper vertically or horizontally? Vertically? Vertically. Okay, so we're going to draw a line down the middle. So I'm going to freehand this, but certainly a ruler is really helpful for this type of thing. So Nix is going to draw her, I'm sorry, their uh, line in pencil. And I'm going to draw mine in marker so you guys at home can see it. Okay, so there's my line there. You can see right down the middle, splitting it. All right, and then what's the next line? So, for me, I think it's easier to just flip your paper kind of like this. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's like... So flip like this? Okay. Yeah. And then you're going to draw another one, kind of figure out where the middle is. Okay. So and again, then, you could use a ruler to measure the middle, or you can eyeball it, roughly. Then draw another one horizontally. Okay. So we're going to do this. I'm going to use. I'm going to do it by eye. Okay, there we go. So I did another see one. At that. So at home, you should use a pencil so you can erase these lines. You don't want these lines in your painting or your drawing, but I did them dark so you can see. All right. Okay, so I did another one like underneath that, just mm -hmm. so you could see, like just so you can get a feel of where you're going to draw. Okay, I can do that. So just, just underneath, maybe about an inch. Yeah, that was say that's good. All right, sounds good. So just like that. So the vanishing point is going to be here. I'm going to put a circle there. Okay. Great. What next? Okay. So the next thing is you want to go from your vanishing point mm -hmm. and you want to draw two lines out. Coming out? Yeah. Okay. So let's say, so it's going to start at the vanishing point and then come out. Or it could be like... Oh, it doesn't have to be like right on top of the vanishing yeah. point either. It's just like that. Hmm, I'm already starting to get a feel for it. That's great. All right. What next? Okay, so the next thing is to draw two other lines mm -hmm. coming out of these ones to make. Okay, I'm going to try to do it first. Okay. And then I'll show you. Oh, that was a little too thick, but... Okay. 
that's why you use pencil so you can do it and you can always erase your mistakes. Now, if you come down to the library, we'll give you this sheet here. This explains how we're going to do a vertical vanishing point landscape drawing. So come on down to the library and pick one of these up. All right, so I'm doing a line. We have two separate lines, so you can do one first. I had to just erase it first. It mm -hmm. looks a little uneven. So, kind of close or kind of go to. So, they can be kind of close. Mm -hmm. So, I would say don't too. Like, don't, don't make the line too like thick or too close together. Right, I'm going to use the line that I have in the middle. Is that okay? Yeah. Good. Okay, so that's going to be the center of my road. I just added another line because I already had some lines here. All right, what's next? Okay, so the next step that are on the instructions is to color it, but I'm going to just not really color it that well. Okay, so we're so just going to fill kinda, in for the time being. Yeah, just so they can kind of get a feel of what they're going to be doing. Great. Okay, so I'll, I'll do a little bit of that too. I'll do this little marker. These are the colors you guys would be using for that. Just so you guys can kind of get a feel for it. Hey, we really get the yellow crown went onto your paper <laughs> until you after. You rolled on over and wanted to <laughs> hang out with me. All right, so now we got our road. All right. Okay. Now what? The next tip is to draw your trees. Um, okay. Now, is there? What do you think for the trees? Do you think that the? Do you think that the? Are the trees going to range at different sizes? Yes. Okay. So the biggest tree, do you think it'll be in the back or the front? The front. Ah, okay. So that means we're going to draw a big tree here, and then to give that perspective, we're going to draw a smaller tree here. I'll show you. Okay, notice how I did that? Okay, so there's two trees, but one looks a little bit further away, and it draws our eye. How'd that turn out? Nice. Nice. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to draw an even smaller tree yeah, all the way how, in the back. It doesn't matter what size they are, as long as the bigger trees are like kind of in the front. Mm -hmm. Just because it seems like you're actually like going down the road. Hmm. Well, I'm going to drive in. Right. Yeah. yeah, you can either do your trees like or you could do them kind of like I'm doing them. All right. It's kind of a little harder in my opinion. Two, yeah. So we got the biggest, medium, da, da, da. so you get an idea. All right. I love these trees. This is great. I'm All only right. going to do one tree. Just okay. So can, like, keep moving. Yeah. All right. What's next? Keep moving along. I'm going to color my trees with a little yeah. green. That's what is the next step anyway? <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm, I'm one step ahead of the game. All right, so I'm going to even just do a little green over the black here. And a green here. Yeah, you could either do like a Kevin's trees if you want to be like fast and easy. Or you could do mine, which are a little tad bit harder. Mm -hmm. But you can give it a more like 3D kind of look, basically. All right. So now what are we going to do for the background? We got the trees. Okay. So the next step is to draw mountains. 
Yeah. No, awesome. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to draw. Draw any way you want. Any, I like that. So there's that. no mistakes. A famous Bob Ross. No mistakes, just happy accidents. All right, so what are we going to do? Where do we start the mountain? Um, I don't know if I start from where the tree top is. Just mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they kind of give a feel of, like, where the top of the mountain is going to be. Sure. Okay, so, so I'll watch you draw the first one. I have to give mine a little point. Okay. Try to make it the way you want it. So, like Kevin said, it's best to do this in pencil first. Mm-hmm. That's always a good idea. Just because you don't want to mess up and then, like, in marker and you can't really fix it. So you're kind of stuck with what you have. Don't be afraid to draw like mountains behind other mountains either, mm -hmm. because it kind of gives you a feel of like what's going on in the picture. Okay, so it's almost, I did mine almost reverse. So I got my biggest mountain all the way in the back here, and then my biggest tree all the way over here. So it has some perspective. Some perspective. That's great. That's really cool. Ooh, I like how you drew a little, little yeah, snow did caps. A, did a couple of them. That was actually going to be the next step, anyways. Was to, oh, okay, to good. Some snow. Good to know. Good to know. I don't normally like know how to do them because. Well, that's the best part about it. I bet there's a billion different ways to do it. Oh, All right. Probably. Okay, I'm going to do a little darker in the mountain. Okay. So these are the way I did my mountain. Okay, now the next step after my going mode is to draw some clouds. Clouds? Okay, i got to do some clouds. How many clouds should I do? You can do as many as you want. They could overlap with the mountains, they could cover the mountains, 